My name is Andrea Mercado and I'm the Executive Director of New Florida Majority. I'm here today with a coalition of community organizations that represent millions of Floridians that were left in the dark. Community organizations, the day after the storm, went out to poor communities, to low-income communities, um, to distribute food and water, to go door to door. We found people who hadn't eaten in days. We came across elders that were suffering from the heat. We came across people with diabetes who desperately needed ice for their insulin. This is not our first storm. We have seen that time and time again, poor communities have different experiences than wealthy communities after a storm. That communities of color, African American communities, Latino communities, immigrant communities have different experiences than white communities after a storm. Miami is one of the most unequal cities in the United States, and we cannot have the most unequal relief and recovery efforts. It was a natural, Hurricane Irma was a natural disaster, but what happened after the storm is a man-made one, and it did not have to be this way. The events of this past week have clearly demonstrated that the mayor has failed to adequately plan and protect vulnerable communities. Pre-storm, we asked the mayor to ensure that federal, state, and county resources be allocated and available post-storm to community organizations that work day after day, year after year in vulnerable communities, and this never happened. We should not let a zip code determine how equipped a community is to weather a storm, and this storm should be a wake-up call that we have to do more to keep all of our neighbors safe. Many poor families did not have the resources to evacuate. They did not have the resources to purchase supplies. And they suffered after the storm. With another potentially catastrophic hurricane around the corner, we are demanding immediate action to resolve the lack of preparedness that left the elderly in insanely hot apartments for days and families without access to fresh food and water or regular contact by county officials and agencies. We demand full transparency and accountability on the part of the mayor and his administration. And specifically today, as we gather outside of the county commission's public hearing on the budget, we're calling for equity in emergency response. We're calling for power for all. We're calling for action on climate. We're calling to stop transit cuts. And we're calling for affordable housing. We need to turn the lights on in Florida for the hundreds and thousands, hundred thousands of people and more who are still without power today in the state of Florida. But we also need to turn the power on um, the issues that have been plaguing our communities for years. There are three million people across the state living in poverty. Um, we know that here in Miami-Dade, we're dealing with inequality and structural racism every day. And we demand, um, we demand accountability and transparency, and together we'll be calling for equity um, in relief and recovery efforts. I'm going to give it over to Maria Rodriguez, the Executive Director of the Florida Immigrant Coalition. Maria. Good afternoon. As Andrea said, um, today uh, we're here on the eve of the conversation around the budget. The budget is a moral document that reflects the priorities of this community. All of us, 6.8 million people, were displaced on Hurricane Irma. We had the experience of being without water, of fearing for our lives, of not having food. This was a 48-hour experience for some, but for others in this county, this is a day-to-day -day experience. Many who are food insecure, who are fearful of la migra, who are concerned about keeping the lights on or the roof above their heads, whether they live in a trailer park or in a damaged rental unit that they are paid but cannot occupy. Currently, we need to seize this moment to protect the working, unemployed, disabled, and youth of our county that do not have equal protection. In particular, 
immigrant communities who could not access federal aid, who unfortunately, because of the leadership of this county, are starting to fear the authorities and the local government. It's very important that we make a strong message and that the leadership of this community, including the mayor and the county commissioners, look at this budget and bring equity to it for all Miamians. There's a proposed $25 million cut to transit, which we know is so vital to our families and to our economy. What is extremely painful and ironic is that we were sold, thrown under the proverbial bus to collaborate with the detention deportation machinery because we wanted to get federal money for transit, for example. So we are here to say that the political will of this community needs to take all of our communities into account as we look at this budget, needs to take the reality of climate change into account as we take the measures, and needs to look at immigrant families and do what many other cities have done to claim that we will not collaborate with the detention deportation machinery and that our resources should go towards supporting the future of this town. Thank you. Let me uh, introduce, I want to acknowledge the New Florida majority within 12 hours of the storm. It wasn't FEMA, it wasn't the Red Cross, it wasn't the county agencies, it was the community organizations that set up nine community emergency operations centers in the most vulnerable communities. It was these organizations that were there as first responders, um, and I want to thank the organizers of New Florida Majority and introduce Daniel Garcia, one of the folks who was on the ground. Thank you. I want to talk about what I experienced when I was going out there at the doors and when I was going out there in those communities that were vulnerable. I saw uh, people that were coming out of their houses sweating. Our elderly, our elders were coming out sweating. Children were coming out. And then across the block to across the street which were businesses and they had electricity. They got electricity between two days. But then these other communities, our families, our elders, they had not seen electricity since they took nine days for, for them to get electricity. Nobody came to them to offer them water. Nobody came to them to offer them ice. They didn't really have the resources to be able to get out of this, this uh, hurricane that passed by. They were telling me that in past hurricanes, they would open the, the high school that was near to them as a shelter, but this time, that wasn't an option. They couldn't get to the shelter, so they had to weather the storm. And out there, when I was walking around in this uh, sonorous heat, what I saw were people were going to their neighbor's houses to avoid the sun. If the sun hit their homes, they went to the neighbors to get it a little bit of shade. They couldn't cool off and they were out of their way. And the resources, the ice, if they had the ability to get around, if they had the ability to go and get the ice, it was far away from them. It was, this was a neighborhood in Alabama. These are marginalized communities. These are real people. And what I observed going out there is when we set this barbecue, we run out of food within two or three hours. We will come back the next day, we'll come back with more food, and we'll run out of food again. Then we'll come back with ice. There was a real big demand. But I was greatly honored to be next to many volunteers that were victims themselves, that gave their time to help their neighbors, to help their friends. And we just showed up in force, and we just did whatever we could, but we don't have all the resources. And we're here asking to make sure that those resources are made available. Because hurricanes are gonna continue passing through South Florida. And this one, it didn't hit us directly, but the next one may. And we need to be prepared. I'd like to introduce Caroline Lewis with the Clio Institute. It is my pleasure to be here today. I cannot thank the CBOs on the ground for rallying this effort. I am so upset 
the people who think that they run for office to be public servants do not understand what public service means. And so I'm here today because of this budget hearing and I'm going to speak. But here's the bottom line. You talk about a strong economy for Miami. You talk about a resilient Miami and Miami-Dade County. You talk about all these things and you understand that no business, no organization, no entity in our county could survive without a workforce. And it is that very workforce that is living at or just above the poverty level. And they have no safety net. And our failure to prepare for what we know is here and coming is an atrocity. We cannot justify approving budgets like this and talking the talk about public service without walking the walk. All of us who live right at that edge of the poverty level, we are the marginalized group. And we are the ones that say, no, we don't want big government, we want a livable wage. And until you give us a livable wage, we need government to make sure that every threat of harm is out of our way. So I applaud you all, my colleagues, my friends, for stepping up. And there's a part where we must continue to do this, but it is government, and it is policy, and it is the business, and it is the private-public partnership that will take care of the most vulnerable, which is more than a million of us in our great county. So thank you all for this, and let's keep on reminding them what public service means. And we know that this isn't over today, and we know that this isn't over for the many families that suffered during the storm. There are families that were fired because um, the breadwinner might have been fired because they chose to evacuate um, or chose to prepare their home instead of showing up for work in the day before the storm. There are families that um, are facing eviction because after a week with no pay, families that struggle to pay bills and put food on the table might not have enough to pay rent next month. Um, so we know that there's much more that we need to do to protect our most vulnerable communities. And today at the county commission meeting, our coalition will be calling for equity in emergency response. $500,000 in an emergency contingency reserve that community organizations who are there day in and day out and can be on the ground before anyone else can access. Power for all. The FPL franchise resources must be allocated to solar generators, to cooling centers in vulnerable communities. We need climate action. There's $180 million that we need for stormwater projects to protect us for the next storm. And we need to stop the mayor's proposed $25 million in transit cuts. We have seen how critical public transit is to getting people to shelters, to evacuating people, and this is not a time to be cutting our public transit system. And lastly, we need an affordable housing trust fund to be fully funded at $10 million to keep families safe. We heard too many stories of, of slumlords who wouldn't even allow families to put plywood up. That's unexcusable. We need affordable housing and we need to make sure that, land, that landlords and everyone does their part to keep Miamians safe in the next storm. I want to thank everyone for coming here today. We're going to be heading up to make our remarks known um, at the county budget hearing in just a few moments.